I'm told every day by people, Dr. Zorowski, I can't seem to lose weight no matter what I try. It all seems to be hopeless. This could be due to weight loss resistance, where you can't lose weight despite all your hard efforts because of an inflammation issue in your body. Millions of people suffer with this problem and you may be one of them. The inflammatory response in your body isn't always bad though. In fact, it's your body's way of defending itself and repairing damaged tissue. Without short-term inflammation, wounds would never even heal. Short-term inflammation is temporary and goes away after just a few days. Now, chronic inflammation, on the other hand, well, that incurs inside the body and can lead to major, major complications, including weight gain. The relation, though, between obesity, inflammation, and metabolic syndrome is an interconnected web that is critical to pay attention to because it eventually will turn into a severe health problem if it's not addressed. Now, we know that the weight gain, the belly fat, isn't something that we want, and that's a health problem, but the health consequences of chronic inflammation are far, far worse. Here's a few examples. Heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, autoimmune conditions, and also neurodegenerative disorders. Now, if you're not suffering with one of these at this time, there's a good chance that you will at some point in your life based on statistics. So what do we do about this? So if you cannot lose weight because of inflammation, it's reasonable to ask, how the inflammation happened in the first place. In this case, the problem being the extra weight around the belly is the cause. Here is how it happens. The process of inflammation is an immune response. Inflammation induced by excess belly fat represents a focused and rapid response by the innate immune system. However, Unlike defensive short-term inflammatory responses that fight off an infection, the inflammation mar marked by an excess accumulation of belly fat does not resolve itself and without intervention can become chronic. This chronic inflammatory process leads to a disruption in your metabolic balance. Now, increased weight gain causes increased inflammation, making you more prone to insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases. Systemic inflammation can make weight gain easier, and that's not a good thing, and weight loss far more difficult. However, reducing excess weight also tends to mean less inflammation. The cycle goes like this. Weight gain causes increased amounts of inflammation, which causes more weight gain. As you can see, that's a negative feedback cycle. The problem causes more of the problem. Now, on the other hand, decreased inflammation causes weight loss, which leads to less inflammation, which of course leads to more weight loss. And so what we have to do is we have to get that inflammation down in our body and that will lead to weight loss and of course, less inflammation because that's a positive feedback cycle. It's ideal that we focus on reducing inflammation in order for your body to be in a healthy physiological state that will promote fat loss rather than fat gain. Let's take a look at the foods that fight inflammation. But before we do, I want to let you know that we are currently doing open enrollment for our health consulting program at New Vision Health Center. It's called NutriCore. It's been a full year since we've accepted any new participants in NutriCore. So I'm excited to give more people the opportunity to join us. If you're looking for a second opinion or natural solutions to your health concerns, or just want to get help from doctors and nutritionists who look to solve your health issues at the root cause and not just push pharmaceuticals on you, then click the link below to set up a complimentary wellness advisor call. So you can see if NutriCore is right for you. There are limited spots available. You can find a link in the description below. Now let's dive into the foods that fight inflammation. First on our list is gonna be olive oil. Now olive oil is great. Here's the key with olive oil though, is that you wanna find good quality olive oil and you also wanna make sure that you're not heating it, okay? This is where a lot of people go wrong with olive oil. They put it on the stove, they heat it up, it goes rancid. You wanna use it as a finishing oil on your meat, use it as a dressing on your salad and that's the best way to use olive oil. Next on our list is gonna be green leafy vegetables. Now some examples of this will be spinach, kale or even romaine lettuce. It's always good to make sure they have lots of green leafy vegetables in 
in our diet simply because it's good for our gut health, but also it has the micronutrients within it to fight off inflammation. Next thing on our list is gonna be nuts. And some good examples of nuts that help fight inflammation would be almonds and walnuts, okay? Those also have the good fats in it. It's best to get them raw whenever possible. If you can get them raw with salt on them, some sea salt, that's excellent. But when you get nuts that are cooked, or maybe even fried in something, well, then it makes the good healthy fats in them go rancid. So we wanna always make sure we get raw whenever possible. Next on our list is gonna be fatty fish. Now, fatty fish is so great for us. It has high amounts of DHA and omega-3s in it. Some examples of some good fatty fish that's gonna help you fight inflammation will be fish like salmon, mackerel, tuna, sardines, and also herring. So look to those fatty fish because they're gonna be the best ones for you. Now, let's take a look at the next thing, fruit. Now, some examples of good fruit that are micronutrient rich with specific nutrients that help fight inflammation are gonna be fruits such as strawberries, blueberries, cherries, and also oranges. Those are some of, I don't know, those are some of my favorite fruits. I think that you'd probably love them too and heck, they're gonna fight some inflammation in your body. Okay, coffee. Coffee actually is a very powerful antioxidant, okay? Now, not the coffee that you get at Starbucks loaded with sugar and dairy and everything else, but if you make yourself a good organic coffee, high in antioxidant, and it's also very good at fighting inflammation. So it's one of the healthiest things that the average American consumes in their day-to-day -day life. I mean, you think of somebody who's eating just a garbage diet. I mean, my goodness. Drinking coffee is like the best thing that they do because they get that huge antioxidant boost. Now this one next on our list is gonna be one that everybody loves, right? It's dark chocolate, okay? Now the key here, in order to get the inflammation fighting benefits that chocolate offers is we wanna go with dark chocolate. And we wanna make sure that we're not getting chocolate full of sugar, okay? So if you get some of the stevia sweetened ones, those are the best in my opinion. You get the stevia sweetened chocolates that are dark, really, really awesome really powerful as well, antioxidant rich. Avocados are a great fat that helps fight inflammation. So that's a powerful one that I think should just be on everybody's list. I mean, one of the things I love to do is just take an avocado, eat it at lunch, cut it in half, sprinkle sea salt on it. I'm telling you, it's actually really good that way. So avocados, and then next on our list is gonna be the spice turmeric, okay? This is something that's really good to include in your uh, food. You can spice your meals with it. You can even take it in supplement form. This is also highly beneficial because it's a huge inflammation fighter in your body. Now, beyond those foods that help fight inflammation, the other thing that we can do is make sure that we're cleaning up our diet, okay? If you wanna really follow a good inflammation-free diet, make sure you go sugar-free, okay? The sugar is a huge driver of inflammation. If you're dealing with autoimmune issues, inflammatory issues, you can't lose weight. Sugar is one of the most important things that you could give up. Go sugar-free. And the other thing you can do to really, I don't wanna say put the icing on the cake because that's not, <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here, but the thing that you can do that really will offer you some great benefit as well is go grain-free, okay? Many people react poorly to grains and a lot of the grains out there today are GMO, they're covered with pesticides, they're not healthy for you, okay? So just go grain-free and if you're in doubt whether this is gonna help you or not, do it for a period of time. See how you feel over a two week period not doing any grains at all, okay? Just 100% grain free, 100% sugar free. Add in some of those different foods, get some exercise in, get some sunshine on your skin, and these things are all gonna help you fight inflammation. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Dr. Zorowski. Look forward to seeing you in the next. And if you really like this video, I think you'll like this video next.